Smith has a number of different helmets, so how do you know which helmet is right for you? I'm gonna go through the details and differences of each of these helmets, ranging in price from $85 all the way up to $310. You might be surprised when you hear the differences between these helmets. We'll be looking at the $85 Convoy, the $130 Engage, the $170 Session, the $200 Payroll, the $250 Forefront 2, and the $310 Mainline. The Smith Convoy is an $85 entry-level helmet from Smith. Has some of the main features for their helmets, uh, but missing a lot of the cool tech from the more expensive. So basically it comes with a fixed visor here on the front. It has 20 vents over the entire helmet. It's adjusted in the back here using the vapor fit. It has MIPS on the inside. You can see the MIPS system here on the inside. It's also just got the standard pads. I have a set of Bobcats here from Smith just to show the integration. Will work for storing sunglasses up on top and those don't interfere with your head on the inside. They also will work with a Smith goggle as well. So that's your entry level Smith Convoy. It retails for $85. Next up is the Smith Engage. It retails for $130. You're going to start getting some additional features with this helmet. For example, you get a multi-position visor. It also has zonal choroid here on just the sides, but not in the top section. One thing I do like about that is if you are using a light, strapping it through the vents, with the choroid all the way through the top makes that difficult. There's 21 vents around this helmet. It is CPSC and CEEN1078 certified. It does have MIPS on the inside as well as the same, as well as the vapor fit ratchet adjustment in the back. Looking at the inside, you can see the MIPS system. It's got the removable pads as well for cleaning. The Engage also is integrated with the Smith sunglasses. With the Bobcats here, they do fit a little differently on the sides of the helmet there. There's kind of a little slot for them to slide in on each side. You can store these from the rear as well through those same slots. The Engage weighs just an ounce more than the Convoy at 12 ounces. Stepping up from the Convoy to the Engage, you're getting the choroid protection that you're paying a little bit extra for. Moving on from the Engage over to the Session, retails at $170 you're going to see a few more features on this. It's got 15 fixed vents. It's also got the adjustable visor. One thing I've noticed is this visor doesn't have these little side pieces like the Engage does. And I feel like the Engage, when you're adjusting that visor, it just clicks into place better than the Session does. The Session is also CPSE and EN1078 certified. It's got the zonal choroid on just the sides in the same spot as the Engage did. It has the same vapor fit dial in the back here to make adjustments. It also has MIPS on the inside. You can see the MIPS plastic on the inside there as well as the padding. So something different from the Engage here is with the padding, it does have an ionic treatment that's basically a mineral antimicrobial coating to help the fabric stay clean. The Session weighs the same as the Engage at 12 ounces. It also offers the same eyewear storage underneath the visor. Slides in through these little gaps here. or you can store them in the back of the helmet as well. If you like wearing a goggle when you ride, the Engage and Session do support the goggles as well, uh, being able to lift up the visor to store those on top of the head. And then they fit better around the back of the helmet as well. It also has nice integrated airflow if you are using a goggle 
up at the front so that that air can transfer through to the goggles vent as well and keep those fog free. The vent is slightly different than on the Engage, allowing a little bit more airflow through there. But basically what you're paying for in jumping up from the Engage to the Session, getting that Ionic Plus treatment on the pads inside. Next up is the Payroll Helmet retailing at $200. And this is where you're going to see a little bit more of a difference between the helmet there's a little bit different style and the fit of the helmet is a much larger helmet on head. And that's because these are designed for e-bike or heavy enduro use. So there's a little bit more protection in these helmets. And in addition to the CPSC and the EN1078 certification, the payroll has the NTA8776 e-bike certification as well as an ASNZS2063 certification. And it is the only half shell helmet for mountain biking that has those additional certifications. And it is just because it is a bigger helmet with more protection. I think it's easiest to see the size difference from above here, looking down in the helmet. You can see that it is thicker here on the sides and the overall volume of the helmet is bigger, just offering more protection there. So the payroll has 19 vents around the helmet. It also has that adjustable visor as well into those three positions. It's adjustable in the back with the same vapor fit. Has the MIPS on the inside as well as zonal choroid in the same spots on the sides, but not on the top. On the inside of the helmet, you can see the MIP system in there, as well as some additional padding pieces here that the other helmets did not have. This is an ionic coated padding as well. So with the payroll, you're really paying for more protection, a slightly different style of helmet and look, as well as a bigger visor up on front. This might be for someone who is into more aggressive riding or e-bikes because you're traveling at a higher speed. The payroll and the forefront helmets offer something that the other helmets don't, and that's an ALEC crash sensor on the back of the helmet. I do have the forefront too here with the ALEC sensor. It's a much bigger knob here on the vapor fit that you can turn. That's because an ALEC crash sensor is built in here. Did want to mention that. Basically, you just charge it here, you set it up through your phone, and if you're in a wreck or it detects that you've crashed, it can notify individuals around you or emergency contacts that there has been a wreck. That is an additional $20 on the payroll if you want to get that feature built in. The payroll helmet also is built with the integrated sunglass storage up on top here but there is no storage on the back for sunglasses. Because the payroll is designed for a more aggressive riding style, it pairs well with a set of goggles and they store nicely under the visor by clicking it up. The integration is really tight against the goggles and helmet there. It also has nice airflow as well here through the helmet to keep the goggles from fogging up. The Forefront 2 retails for $250, so you're jumping up $50 from the payroll, but you really get all of the features that Smith has to offer for their helmets. Starting out up front, you've got the adjustable visor in that three position, and I do really like this visor the best out of all of the helmets that I've used. It just clicks into place better. It's the perfect size for keeping the sun out of your eyes. You get choroid all the way around the helmet, except for in the very top here. You also got a spot here to attach a light or an action camera. It has the same vapor fit style knob for adjustment. This one is bigger, as I mentioned, because of that Alec crash sensor on the back. It does have MIPS on the inside. You can see the MIPS system in there. And then it has the two pad system around the brow and in the top of the helmet. 
It does have the Ionic Plus treatment on the pads as well to help keep them cleaner and stench free. I would say that the forefront fits similar to the Session Engage and Convoy. The Payroll is really the only one that has a different fit for the half shell helmets. I think the sunglasses and goggle integration is the best with the forefront as well. It just has better grooves here for the sunglasses to slide in and out of. And it is easier to store the sunglasses on the back as well, as well as it matching this line across the back. I just feel like it fits better and is easier to store the sunglasses and remove them with the forefront helmet. The forefront too also works well with goggles. They fit well around the back of the helmet, store away nicely underneath the visor, and have that nice tight fit between the helmet and goggle. The ventilation port up here is a little bit different as well, but still offers plenty of airflow coming in through the front of the helmet here. Last up, we have the mainline helmet. It retails for $310. The obvious differences here are that you get the chin mount. You do have an adjustable visor up on top. By spinning this little piece here, it just locks that in place. It has 21 vents around the helmet. And like the forefront too, it has choroid around the entire helmet. It has MIPS on the inside. The main line has some additional padding as well around the top of the helmet and around the neck and cheeks. The helmet comes with additional cheek pads and neck pads just for dialing in that fit. It closes with a D-ring style strap. Being a full-faced helmet, it is CPSC EN1078 EN NTA8776 e-bike ASTM F1952 downhill rated. The pads on the inside are Ionic Plus treated. This helmet integrates well with both sunglasses. However, there is no storage for the sunglasses up on top or in the back. I think most that are using this helmet will be using it with goggles. It pairs well, really nicely with them. It's got kind of a raised bar in the back here to hold that strap in place. It's a very tight fit across the goggle and helmet. And the ventilation for the goggles comes right in through the front and forces air downward into the top of the goggle. So you've got a wide price range here of Smith helmets. How do you know which one to choose, which one is right for you? Let me give you my opinion. It's easy to choose between the full face. I think you would know if you're going to be wanting something like that. You're going to be spending a lot of money for some additional protection. But this helmet fits great, integrates well with sunglasses and goggles. So I'm gonna move that one aside and just look at Smith's other five half shell mountain bike helmets. The Convoy is a great entry level helmet if you don't need any of the tech or coating. You're basically missing out on the Cordura and the coating on the pads, as well as just getting a simpler helmet. It doesn't have the adjustable visor. Moving up to the Engage and Session, they're both very similar helmets. You're getting the Cordura Zonal in both helmets. Basically what it comes down to with these is a slight difference in the vent designs up on top with the session, you get the ionic treatment of the pads, but both helmets fit about the same. The payroll might be the right helmet for you if you're into more enduro riding, want some additional protection, or on an e-bike where you're riding at higher speeds. It's going to be a little bit bigger helmet on your head. It's also got a bigger visor than the session or engage. You're getting that zonal Cordura on the sides and the ionic treatment of the pads. You can kind of think of it as a session with just some additional protection. The Forefront 2 is going to be your top of the line half shell helmet from Smith, and that's reflected in the price. You get Cordura around the full helmet, except for in the top here, 
The vent design is a little bit different. You also get the ionic treatment of the pads on the inside. You have the option for the ALEC crash sensor in the back. It's got the best sunglasses and goggle storage, in my opinion, of all of the helmets. If money's no issue, I definitely recommend the Forefront 2. But if you're looking for more protection, definitely go with the payroll. If you're looking for a more budget-friendly option, both the Engage and Session are great helmets. Very similar, just the difference with the coating of the pads on the inside. And then for someone that's just entry level, take a look at the Convoy. Hopefully this comparison between all of Smith's mountain bike helmets has made it a little bit clearer which helmet's right for you, offered a good explanation and a side-by-side -side comparison of all the helmets. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you like videos on outdoor gear, please subscribe to the channel.